So here are the answers to question 3. We have four variables x, y and z, 11 observations each. And we are asked to produce three scatter diagrams, y, z and w against x at a time. So let's go to Excel. Here are the data. We'll use this later. So let's use first calculator scatter diagram. We highlight two group two columns of the data, go to insert scatter, and here is the scatter diagram for X. So let us put the data on the on the axis. So we have series edit, that's gonna be the Series y values that's in C, so y is C, and the horizontal axis is going to be x. So we always see the y set and w. We're going to see on the vertical, on the vertical axis. So let's do it like this. Now we want x against z. Insert scatter. Here we go. Title to it, that's it, and we'll put it next to it. We squeeze it into a square form so we can get all three in there, and then the last picture x against w insert scatter scatter. So here are our three scatter diagrams, and we can see that they behave very, very differently. And we'll get back to these behaviors. Let's have another look at the question. So we, we've done part one, and to make us feel happy, we can just put a little tick to this. Part two, show the sample correlation coefficients between y and x is 0.82 and that this is the same as the corresponding correlation between z and x and w and x. So that what I've already done, but I'll show you I'll show you how I did this. You know, we'll perhaps just for the time being increase this a little. So this formula, what I've done to calculate the correlation is the correl function and what you need to enter is the the two series which we use here, the data in column C and the data in column B, X and Y. And you can see I put the dollar signs to the B such that when I now copy that across, you get the correct data. So let's look at this field that will give us the correlation between X and Z and this one, the correlation between X and W. So because I have these dollar signs for the x references, they don't move as I copy the formula across. And you can see that more or less the correlation for all three pairs of variables is 0 0.82. Of course, the series y, z, and w are very, very different. So we can look at the scatter diagrams. Remember, on the horizontal axis, we always have the x. On the vertical axis, we have y, z, and w they behave very, very differently. So let's go back here. We answered part two of the question, part three. Using Excel, show that the three separate regressions of y on x, z on x, and w on x, all yield a line of best fit, or regression equation of the form 3 plus 0.5x. So we should find an intercept of 3 and a slope coefficient of 0.5. Use Excel to superimpose this regression line on each of the three scatter diagrams obtained in part A. So we will do this in a little bit of a pedestrian way. We can use Excel to estimate regressions, but we, we want to understand what we are doing here. So we are basically saying that 
we have three questions y is alpha plus beta times x plus an error term and we have observations i, i and i here and then the question is what are our estimates for alpha hat and our estimates and estimates for alpha which we call alpha hat and what is beta hat now we know beta hat is going to be the covariance of x i with y i let me just put the y i in here as red and perhaps I'll put a red number in here as well divided by the variance of the explanatory variable of x okay so I'm gonna have this and we know that alpha hat is going to be the dependent variable, the average of the dependent variable, yi. Actually, what I want to do is I want to give that a red color again. The average of y minus beta hat times the average of x bar. So, you can see that when we do our calculations, what we need is basically four things. We need the covariance between the two variables. We need the variance of x. We need x bar and y bar. And I, I left a few red marks in here, the y bar and the covariance of y, i and x, i. These are the things that change. Right? The x bar will be unchanged and the variance of x will be unchanged because what we are changing in the question is always we're going to have either y, z, or w, but the x is always going to be the same. So let's start with this one and go back to Excel. Let me take away the correlations. But actually, instead of the correlations, what I really want is the covariance. So let us just see. If I just increase this a bit. So what we want is the covariance we will find that in statistical and we're going to to see covariance s this is really what we want and the type of the formula is that we have covariance s and then we need references to the two uh, two sets of data now that has exactly the same structure as correlation so we'll actually just replace correlation with covariance dot s and we get a value here and then we will copy that across so in here we have the covariance of x with one of the three series okay with either y z or w so then what we also needed was the variance of x now I should Open. So we needed the variance of x. So let's see variance, and we want the sample sample variance. And we, if we use the sample covariance as we did, we want the sample variance of so variance s. We want this one. So now we just got to say of what the variance of x. And here we go. So that's 11. That will remain unchanged. We also want the mean of x, that was the x bar, so I will say that's the average of x again, that is up here. So these two things, oh, let me just highlight them yellow, they will always remain unchanged. Let's go back, what else do we need? We need uh, the, we have the covariance, we have the variance, we have x bar, so we need the y bar. So let's go back to Excel. Let's say the mean of question marks, so either of uh, y, w, or z, and that's going to be the average of this series. And I shall copy that across. There we go. They're always uh, very similar, extremely similar, 7.5 are the values approximately. So, and now we'll just calculate beta hat and we use 
our formula. So beta hat was covariance divided by the variance of x. And that will variance of x will remain unchanged, so we fix that. And we'll copy that across. So we can see here, this is one of our solutions. This is the slope coefficient, and it is always basically 0.5. And now we're looking for alpha hat. Alpha hat was the average of the dependent variable, so that was this one, minus beta hat times the average of x, so x bar. Now x bar will remain unchanged, so again I put the dollar signs in. Everything else will change, and on each occasion we are basically getting a value of 3, very similar to 3. So that means we have shown that for all three regressions where we replace the red bits with W, so the red bit was also could have been WI or ZI, everything else was the same, and we always find a relationship like this, 3 plus 0.5 times X. So now we're meant to superimpose this on each of the three scatter diagrams in part A. So here we need to do a little bit of uh, Excel chicory pokery. Let's see how we how we best achieve that. There are several ways of of doing that. I'll just show you show you one. Now the important thing is, so we'll say just tempor temporarily move that a little bit to the side, the y graph a bit to the side. So I call this the predicted series. Now if you go back, the predicted series doesn't involve the explanatory variables, it just involves 3 plus 0.5 with slight variations as we saw before, times x, and the x is always the same. So we really only need one new column. Okay, the predicted series, and that is going to be 3 plus 0.5 times the value of x, which is up here. And we copy that down. So these are our predicted values. They're in column F. So now let me just move that, I'll leave it here a bit so we can see it. So if you now want to add this here, how you can do that is you go to select data, we say we want to add a series, uh, series name predicted, series x values are exactly the, uh, are the same, I think we can actually leave that free, let's try that, and the y values are these values which we just calculated, so we put them in, and that doesn't work. So that clearly didn't work. That means that possibly we have to put in the x values again. And here we go. That works. So the red, the red marks represent the regression line. And let's do exactly the same. Here we select the data. We add. Call it predicted, x values come from here, y values come from here, and as an arrow I left the, this one in, you can also, let's just do it again, like this, that wasn't quite right, so empty, now we want it, here we go, that should be right, that's right, okay, 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 and lastly, we do it here. Select the data, add the predicted x values come from here, and the y values come from here. There we go. So here we have our predicted values in each. I what happened here? I must have. 
press the wrong button. If you now, for aesthetic reasons, want to turn this into a line because it also represents, it really represents a function, your what we call conditional expectations, just highlight one of these points. You see, all get highlighted. Right mouse click, format data series, and line color. You see, there's currently no line, so we say solid line, and marker options. We'll say we don't want any markers and what you get is your regression line and we can quickly achieve that for the others and um, mark options non line solid close and yeah we do exactly the same mark options non and line solid there we go here we have our regression regression lines in our three scatter diagrams Remember that was the one, this one was the one for Y, this for Z, and this for W. Just so we don't remember because the title got lost. Let's go back. What we were asked to do, so we have done part three. Proudly we can tick this off. To what extent do you feel that correlation and regression analysis is useful for the various pairs of variables? Let's go back. Basically, we may change that question to asking the question, which regression line represents the actual data points well? So if you now look at these three, I think we should say that certainly for y, the regression of y on x, that looks pretty good. Okay, The, the relationship between the two variants variable seems to be linear, there's some variation, it's not a perfect relationship, but the regression line seems to capture that quite well. Now for the second bit, z and x, you can see that there's a very clear relationship between z and x, but it's not a linear one. So what we did by a regression analysis, we forced the linear relationship in here, and that doesn't represent that relationship very well. And then we have another case where really we have a very, very linear and very good relationship between W and X, but that's this one outlier, this value up here. And this one actually sort of skews that linear relationship. If you hadn't that, we would have a really, really good relationship. So if you have situations like this in real life, you have to think about what's, what's the issue with this. You shouldn't necessarily delete it if that's a genuine point, it's there. Uh, but you, you clearly got to think about it. So that's all for this. Let's just tick off the fourth bit. We've done it.